Before you jump head first into fully designing your product, you really need to look at the big picture. This will allow you to answer many questions much earlier than otherwise. And the best way to achieve this early insight is by inserting an intermediate step between defining your product and fully designing it. And this intermediate step is called a preliminary production design, which I'll sometimes just simply call it pre-design. And by a preliminary production design, I mean to design the product with just enough detail to answer some of these important questions, but without worrying yet about the tiny details that don't have a big impact. The problem is that once you dig into the full design, you tend to get buried in all the technical details. The old saying, you can't see the forest through the trees, definitely rings true in this situation. To be a successful product founder, you need to see both the trees and the forest. For example, with electronics design, most of the cost and functional impact is related to the microchips or integrated circuits. The secondary components, such as resistors and capacitors, don't really matter that much. Their cost is usually minimal once you reach manufacturing volumes. The exact specifics of how all the various electronic components connect together also doesn't really matter at this early stage. Sure, you need to define in broad terms how the components will interface, but you don't need to worry about the small details yet. For example, if a sensor connects to a microcontroller, you should define the interface as being I2C, which is just a, a two-wire serial protocol common with sensors. But at the pre-design stage, you don't need to worry about the details like the pin numbers or the value of the required pull-up resistors. When designing a new product, most of the work is in the details. But in most cases, those details don't really have much of an impact on the big picture. For a typical product, here are the steps that I perform as part of the preliminary production design stage. Step number one is I identify each core function, such as the microcontroller, Bluetooth sensors, power management, etc. And step number two is to create a block diagram showing how to incorporate all of these core functions. Step three is to define how the components will be interconnected by specifying whether it's a UART interface or I2C, SPI, I2S, GPIO, USB. And, and don't worry if you have no idea what some of these acronyms mean. Just know that specifying them in the block diagram is critical to selecting the right electronic components, especially the microcontroller or microprocessor, which is the brains of your product. Then step four is to select the best microchips to perform the various product functions. This is the most important step of the preliminary production design. Lots of things need to be taken into account when selecting the critical components, such as performance, cost, availability, manufacturer support, packaging, physical size, and the forecasted end of life, or EOL. Step number five is to estimate the size of the printed circuit board required and the number of layers needed. This helps to determine the minimum required size for your product, as well as the manufacturing cost of the PCB. Step number six is to estimate the number of BOM components, or BOM for bill of material components, the number of PCB pads, whether components will be soldered on both sides of the PCB. These are all details that will allow you to eventually estimate the cost to manufacture your product. Step number seven, determine the number size, and general shape of any custom-shaped plastic pieces required by the enclosure. This information allows you to estimate the, the cost for the injection molds that will be required to scale from a prototype to mass manufacturing. It will also allow you to estimate the manufacturing cost for your enclosure. Step eight is to ascertain the complexity of final assembly for the product. Are there lots of pieces that have to squeeze into a tiny enclosure very carefully? If so, this will impact the cost to assemble the product. Ideally, you can estimate how long it should take to assemble your product. Step nine, finally, give some thought to how complex it will be to test your product during manufacturing. Ideally, try to estimate how long it will take to properly test it. How long this takes will impact the manufacturing cost. Can your product even be realistically developed? How much will it cost to develop and scale it? How much profit can you make? What distribution strategies should you pursue? How much should you sell the product for? These are just some of the questions that a preliminary production design 
can help you answer before you actually begin fully designing the product. Pre-designing your product before you start on the full design has many advantages. Okay, let's now discuss some of these advantages. First of all, as I mentioned already, it allows you to see the big picture. Most entrepreneurs focus solely on the product they're developing. But remember, you're not developing a new product. You're developing a new company. So repeat after me. I'm creating a company, not just a product. Anytime you find yourself absorbed in the details of product development, remind yourself of this fact. Unless you're one of the rare few who can license out their product idea, you won't ever get rich creating just a new product. If you want to truly get rich, you need to focus your efforts on creating a successful company, not just a single successful product. Well, the more technical you are, the more likely you are to overfocus on the development details too early. And this is because technical entrepreneurs tend to put 100% of their focus on product development. Development is what they feel the most comfortable doing. They have the mindset that they'll worry about all the other stuff, costs, marketing, sales, etc. later once they get through product development. But if you're focusing solely on development, then you are acting as an engineer and not as a product founder or entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, you have to wear lots of hats not just those in your comfort zone. Pre-designing your product helps you to better see all the other aspects of launching a new product, or more importantly, launching a new company. The earlier you identify your key development challenges, the better. The worst case strategy that I've seen is to focus first on developing the easy parts of your product. In fact, you should generally do the opposite. Focus first on solving the more challenging parts of your product. Performing a preliminary production design before you get lost in the fine details of product design allows you to more easily identify the parts of your product that will be the most challenging to develop. Once you do identify the critical challenges, you should come up with the solution before you proceed beyond the pre-design stage. Pre-design is really all about identifying the best solutions without worrying about the non-critical details. A preliminary production design is a top-down approach to product design. You start at a high level and then work your way down to lower levels as needed. This is in contrast to a bottom-up design strategy where you start by fully designing each sub-function and then eventually connect them all together into a whole system. Entrepreneurs tend to follow the bottom-up approach, whereas established companies developing new products usually will implement a top-down approach. The top-down approach al allows for more structured control of a project, which usually leads to minimized cost. This is why most companies that regularly develop new products typically follow a top-down approach. You will save money and be more successful if you follow the top-down approach. To, see, to succeed with new product development, you need a structured process. One of the most important benefits of pre-designing your product is that it allows you to accurately estimate all of the costs to launch your product. This includes the cost to fully develop and prototype it, the cost to scale it from prototype to mass manufacturing, and most importantly, the actual cost per unit to manufacture the product. Although it's possible to estimate the development cost for a new product without a preliminary production design, your estimate will be much more accurate if you have this pre-design. The same is true for, for the scaling cost. However, in order to estimate the manufacturing cost, a preliminary production design is absolutely necessary. In fact, this is one of the most important reasons to pre-design your product. Most entrepreneurs, makers, and even engineers spend months or years designing their product. Once they finally have a perfect prototype, then they'll worry about calculating the manufacturing cost. But by then you have little flexibility to control the manufacturing cost unless you go back and do a total redesign. Knowing the cost to manufacture your product, which is also known as the cost of goods sold, or COGS for short, is probably the most important number you should know. After all, the manufacturing cost determines both your sales price and your profit. Remember, you're developing a company, not a product and nothing is more important for a company than profit. Having a preliminary production design and accurate manufacturing cost estimates allows you to individually price out each feature of your product. By knowing the additional manufacturing cost for each feature, you can then select the most economically 
optimal set of features for your product. For example, perhaps you are debating if you should incorporate GPS tracking into your product. Your market re research shows that GPS can increase your sales price by, let's say, $20. But once you price out this feature, you realize it's going to add $15 to your, to your manufacturing cost. Well, based on this data, you may then decide it doesn't make sense to add GPS because the profit margin is too low for that extra feature. Until you understand the key developmental challenges as well as the cost to develop, scale, and manufacture your product, it will be impossible to plan the best strategy going forward. For example, without knowing your development and scaling costs, you'll have no idea how much capital you will, will be needed to get your product to market. Without this information, you're likely to run out of money before your product reaches the market. Incorporating a pre-designed stage into your development process gives you an opportunity to get early feedback from developers, manufacturers, and maybe even potential customers. To get this feedback, it's best if you have more than just an idea. You, you need to show some upfront work to support your product idea. Sure, a preliminary production design is still just an idea, but it's an idea with some serious development behind it. Because of this, a pre-design can be useful for gathering this early feedback. By putting more focus on cost early in the development process, you'll have more opportunities to lower these costs. A preliminary production design allows more thought towards selecting the best price components. This is in contrast to the typical process of designing the product, then later calculating the manufacturing costs. Following that process will give you very little flexibility to control your product's manufacturing costs. Starting with a preliminary production design allows you to make better decisions that can help reduce the cost to scale your product from prototyping to mass manufacturing. For example, one important element of a preliminary production design is to determine how many custom-shaped pieces of plastic will be required for your product. Minimizing the number of plastic pieces can have a huge impact on reducing your scaling cost. This is because each custom piece of plastic requires its own expensive injection mold. These mold costs are one of the most expensive obstacles you'll face make, get taking your product to market. You'll definitely need more than just an idea to get others interested in investing in your product. The idea is the easy part. Sorry, but I want to be honest with you. Almost everyone has new product ideas, but very, very few have the determination needed to bring it to market. The first piece of information you need in order to raise money is how much money you need. If you don't raise enough, then you'll run out before you make it to market. Trying to raise more than really needed will present an unnecessary difficult challenge. Having a preliminary production design and solid estimates on the cost required is essential to raising early capital. Investors want to see some solid research and development to back up your product. A production quality prototype is ideal, but many entrepreneurs have to raise outside capital before they can afford to produce a high quality prototype. As an entrepreneur myself, I completely understand how excited you are to bring your product idea to, to market. This excitement is necessary for you to be able to surpass all of the obstacles in your path. But this excitement can also lead you to rush getting your product to, on the market. Time to market can be critical, but you also need to take the necessary steps to ensure that you are proceeding down the right path. You don't want to ever be in the position of discovering that you've hurried up and developed the wrong product or developed a product that can't be manufactured and sold at a profit. Starting with a pre-design will give you enough information to see the forest before you get lost in the trees.